Einstein called it a persistent illusion. But look at yourself sitting there. Feel yourself interact with this illusion all the time. Right now, in fact. You have future expectations. You have regrets. Your present seems to be suspended on a string that runs from the past through where you are sitting and stretches off to a distant vanishing point. You can't get off or stop ruminating about the past, thinking about future plans. Your very being seems wrapped in this illusion. It's as if you're experiencing some type of strange, senseless voyage through an ocean of time. Oddly, in the final analysis, the destination doesn't really matter. Reactions to occurrences are all that give the voyage meaning. How our encounter with time is viewed determines what we are. What we see, our emotional approach to the environment, and most importantly, how we respond to life. Time remains an enigma. Humans appear to understand time in many ways, three of which are chaotic time, linear time, and cyclical time. Each viewpoint can exist simultaneously or separately, but each has a different flavor, a different influence, a different power. Chaotic time is the crudest idea and most mystifying In this perception, time has no form, no structure, and offers no help in understanding reality or the world around us. Things happen at random, and everything occurs as a coincidence. In this concept, the movement of time is felt, but it follows no discernible pattern. The future holds nothing but uncertainty. All happenings are unrelated and random. Mainstream media fosters this view of reality by presenting events as unrelated specks of data floating in a dark soup of random circumstance. This viewpoint is the one into which we were schooled. Throughout the world, subjects, oddly enough called disciplines, are taught as separate and unrelated areas of information. In primary schools, when a class finishes with its history lesson, the book is shut and put back into the desk to make room for the geography text, which will be used in the next hour. The concept that history creates geography and geography is intimately connected to history is not covered, explained, or even implied. In high school, training to think in chaotic time becomes supercharged. The disciplines are not only taught in separate classrooms by separate experts, but are walled off from the other subjects, and indeed the outside world as a whole. Subjects are never explained as related components of the same picture. Purposeful fragmentation of the thinking process forces a focus upon the functioning of the analytical, left side of the brain. The more powerful half of the brain, the right hemisphere, which specializes in synthesis, lies dormant through the whole schooling process.
Therefore, the trap of chaotic time and the exclusive use of the left hemisphere in education blocks integration of different bits of data, displays only a coincidence-based reality, and prevents the full use of the brain to integrate various parts of what is experienced to a comprehensive whole. The chaotic concept of time, unnatural for humans, only rears its ugly head when people are specifically trained to think this way. After all, as any student of nature will tell you, everything connects to everything else, and we're just one part of an intricate web of unfolding life. The controllers of Western culture use chaotic time to conceal the whole hidden in the sum of the parts. Everything can be displayed in plain view when working with a population school to hone in on the parts and not be able to step back and see the big picture. Only some can see the global conspiracy of evil to rule the world. Did the conditioning work on you? Linear time is the most common conceptualization of the phenomenon of time. This envisions a passage originating with future expectations, running through present reality, experienced, then either forgotten or dumped into the reservoir of memories. This idea also abides in the linear-oriented left brain, where steps proceed in a straight line from point A to B to point C and lockstep off into infinity. It's mechanical, machine-like, Algorithms locked in computers run linear processes like the marching of a blind army, trudging toward logical conclusions. Happily, this view of time aids the function of planning, the calculation of linear expectations, and the establishment of a seemingly marginally predictable future. Unfortunately, with our collective heads locked in linear time, we become easily controllable. In this paradigm, with the use of simple words, one can be manipulated, managed, and used to our detriment by the articulators of those words. Violation of the rules leads to confinement or death. Improper behavior could cost you your employment, freedom, or social standing. Linear reality creates a verbal police state just outside the door, knocking. The linear view warps reality to meet goals and expectations, and since it proceeds relentlessly forward, it discounts everything but the new. All the historical lessons of mankind categorized as boring trash. In fact, the expression, that's history, in Western culture means quite literally that the past stands as extraneous data, irrelevant in the now. This visualization of time cuts humans off from the eternal in themselves and in nature, creates striving, enshrines competition, engenders stress, produces angst, and puts a rush on our precious time on this planet. Linear time leaves us very much alone, lodged somewhere between the beginning and the end, restless and afraid. The phenomenon of forgetting the past, what's past is past, and worrying about the future is endemic in cultures that hold linear time as their dominant concept. With at best an uncertain future and an admittedly irrelevant past, we've created a culture of I don't care, one that drives the worldwide ethos of take, make, 
and throw away. A danger to ourselves, others, and our environment. Linear time has shot mankind like a bullet screaming toward a concrete wall. Knowing all too well that the journey will end abruptly and tragically. One guarantee that linear time mandates is that within this paradigm, future expectations always control the present. And some have come to realize that those that control these expectations control the future. Linear time also facilitates an insidious use of the left brain's penchant for straight line thinking by inserting in our psyches the expected futures for us to live out as the plan dictates. Through a method known as predictive programming, images of, of a future only desirous to an elite few controllers can be downloaded into the collective psyche after they've been put into a hypnotized state by the flickering media. Since the human subconscious does not differentiate between fiction or fact, the information is stored as an expected future, and the brain, feasting on its new input, sets out to actualize the visualized dystopian nightmare. Elaborately described prophecies implanted by the ruling class have always orchestrated the expectations of the unfolding of time and in turn have colored our reality and motivated our behavior in the desired direction. Linear time creates an opening, a crack in future expectations that can be filled with images, structures, and scenarios easily exploited by Hollywood's poison visions, where a few, in an even more draconian manner, can control the many. But there is another way to view time. Cyclical time gives mankind a perception of time that's the most ancient, the most reliable, the most encouraging. Cyclical time views the unfolding as a series of cycles, within cycles, within even grander cycles. It's said that there are no straight lines in nature, and I would argue that there are no straight lines in time. Day follows night in the daily sun cycle. 28 days of these daily cycles defines a moon cycle, or a month. Twelve of these moon cycles create the yearly sun cycle. Knowledge of the coming season, passing as it always has in procession, reassures that birth, life, and death continue to rotate in divine order. The cyclical has always been ridiculed and discouraged by the distorted powers. They obviously prefer the more synthetic viewpoints. The Christian Church struggled constantly to root out pagan cyclical thinking, teaching that, quote, only the wicked walk in circles. Their biggest ally in wiping out cyclical thinking appears to have been technology. Artificial light overcame the daily cycle. Climate control overcame the seasons. Refrigeration overcame the agricultural cycles and high-tech medicine pushed out the traditional rest and recovery cycles. When cyclical time was the dominant view, people valued patience, ritual, the relatedness of the parts to the whole, and the healing power of time within nature. In linear time, people valued haste, destruction of the past, and the degeneration of the whole replaced by the parts. Just look at modern medicine. 
In cyclical time, there lurks a notion of security. But in the linear, anything can happen. We know the seasonal cycles offer some references to the past and reassurances for the future. Larger cycles, if examined, can offer even more comfort and support because they tender a glimpse of the future through the lens of the past. Ancient Western esoteric cultures considered the procession of the equinox to be insightful as to what might be on the horizon. This antediluvian system is currently used as a source of knowledge by the vipers temporarily ruling this planet. It points to a great change event now occurring. The long promised age of Aquarius is emerging from the watery swamps of Pisces. Each sign of the zodiac has a phrase that characterizes the energy and tenor of the time. In Taurus time, it was, I have. As we transitioned into the age of Aries, the saying changed to, I am. While we existed in the sign of Pisces, now passing away, the motto was, obviously to some, I believe. Fitting, don't you think, for the 2,000 years of the domination of the Abrahamic religions? Pisces also symbolized by an old pictogram, that of two fishes bound together swimming in different directions. Pisces, which encompassed the entire Christian era, also coincidentally represented by a fish, might more rightly be characterized actually by two fishes swimming in different directions. Consider the gentle and loving nature of the character portrayed as Jesus Christ contrasted with the money-oriented and child-molesting bent of his current church in Rome, or its proselytizing Protestant spin-offs currently embracing the globe to the point of suffocation. Over the past 2,000 years, religions demanded, on the threat of death, blind belief. For true believers, it was said, need no proof. The saying for Pisces, I believe, dominated. Now contrast that with the looming age of Aquarius. The saying is, I know. That's right, I know. It's upon us to wake up and witness what's hidden and is now coming forth. Under the harsh light of Aquarius, the secret societies that have vexed and dominated mankind for the entire age of Pisces are becoming illuminated and their dark secrets exposed. Illuminating the Illuminati, if you will. Aquarius represents electric energy, the lightning flow of information, joining together in networks and grids. Oddly, these characteristics of the Aquarian Age link perfectly with another cyclical system that has predicted earthly shifts to a degree of accuracy unmatched by any other mode for 10,000 years. Known as the Yuga Cycles, this system describes four ages of man that occur over a 26,000 year cycle. The Golden Age describe their Satya Yuga. No wars, complete harmony and abundance ruled the planet as our solar system rounded the part of its orbit closest to the galactic center. This center radiates Dharma energy, which is 100% positive, 
as mankind and all creatures on the earth bathe in divine, radiant energy. As the solar system rotates away from the center, we enter the Treta Yoga, which was referred to by the Greeks as the Silver Age. At first, the energy of this time is much the same as the Sati Yoga. But as we glide away from our source of divine Dharma energy, our solar system becomes increasingly corrupted. The existing 100% positive energy becomes slowly polluted with more and more negative power. Until at the end of the Dwapara, we live with only 75% positive vigor and the remaining 25% becomes trapped in the slow, heavy vibration of evil. Sailing further away from the galactic center moves us into the descending Vapara Yuga. The evil and good energy during this time reach 50-50 and the preoccupation of this time is energy. The Greeks called this time the Bronze Age. At the furthest point in our journey in and out of proximity to the divine energy source, we find ourselves in the throes of the Kali Yuga, the Iron Age to the Greeks. We live through a time on the planet when 75% of the energy of the planet becomes black. Perfect breeding ground for the evil force that reigned during the Dark Ages through the Age of Pisces and is still in control of most of mankind today. We left the Kali Yuga and are now firmly into the ascending Dwapara Yuga. And as we race back toward the galactic center, time grows short for the evil snakes that dominate the world's politico and distort our energy into acts of violence, brute force, and separation. In the ascending Dwapara, as in the descending Dwapara period, the obsession is with energy. How more appropriately would you describe our current world's fixation? Described in this cyclical system as a world zooming back toward the light, finishing with our trials with the evil ones where their energy was dominant. Now we stand on equal footing with our positive intentions growing stronger by the day. They know their time of dominance is running out. And they must go back to where they came from. And wait until another twist of the yuga cycles offers them the proper vibration needed to again exercise their evil. On mankind. This cycle has foiled them countless times in the past, and they know it. And they know it will again crush them under the power of light and love. Because we are so heavily into the material cycle, the awakening now taking place must occur on two levels. On the consciousness level, we must learn gratitude, open our hearts, and embrace the world and its inhabitants as part of our divine inheritance. On the physical level, we must stand up, witness and know the horror caused by the infection that has plagued mankind for millenniums. Then, in a very material way, be done with it. Return to your loved ones. Let go of all the devils have offered as material success and walk away from the Babylon jails that have held us captive for so long. Rejoice. At last our time has come. <laughs>